Good afternoon. Continue dealing with uh, Gene Kim's uh, scrambling in order to lie uh, with his faith work system, the same lie that Robert Breaker teaches. And you have to distort scripture and lie. He got caught in a lie because he said, oh, they must, he had to believe in the flood to get saved. Now he admits he's a saved man and his works to show that. But he's pretending that he walked with God. You never even said mention walk with God because he was doing works. Well, let's see what works are uh, able. He was 11. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness, witness, that he was, he was righteous. The sacrifices showed, the blood sacrifices showed he was righteous. The sacrifice didn't make him righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, by, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Abel is still a sign of a sign of our faith. Way back in Genesis, Abel is a witness. The fact he was offering those blood sacrifices, unlike Cain, by faith Enoch was translated that he found it, that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. And then people may attack the word translation. The translation is never good as the original. Well, every time you search it in the King James Bible, it is better. <laughs> you know, I got translated to something better. Um, uh, because God had translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Testimony, he pleased God. What works? He walked with God, and he was not. God took him. Now, Enoch is a type of the church. Noah is a type of the Jew going through the tribulation. So, that's what you get with these double-talking liars. What did they believe in? What did they believe in? Here's uh, Buckman. Adam, Noah, and Abraham were saved by grace through faith. They don't tell you. He doesn't tell us what they believed in. While their works, see Hebrews 11, 7 through 9, he doesn't talk about, he doesn't know about Abel. Doesn't talk about Enoch. Show they had the right kind of faith. See, he must say your faith has to, what, what works? What works at Adam? Adam's not even in the Hall of Fame. He goes, Adam, no one, uh, Abraham was saved by grace through faith while their works show they had the right kind of faith. Adam's not in there. He was 11. <laughs> Let me go check. <laughs> I think he's in there. I haven't seen him. Let me see here. While their works, yeah, Adam's works. Yeah, Adam's known as a, a line of uh, death. Uh, let's see here. Now, nah, the first guy shows up as Abel, not Adam. See if he lies? Oh, Adam was saved by grace through faith. And by their works. What works? What works did Adam do? None. <laughs> do anything. Think first thing that shows up in any works is Abel, bringing the right sacrifices as a witness. As a witness. They were more extra sacrificed than Cain, who brought his own works from his own flesh, telling God, they said, we take my good vegetables, and God said, no, I want blood. And, um, and he obtained witness. He's a witness. The sacrifice didn't save him. He gave a witness to the fact what he believed. Just like the New Testament. And he got, he's got here Adam. He's a lively boy. Adam, Noah, and Abraham were saved by grace through faith. While their works show they had, oh, I mean, who there? Oh, is Adam in there? No. Enoch in there? No. Gene King got caught. So let's go on now. We have 10 minutes, or, uh, not 10 minutes in. Go on. Romans chapter 2, verse 13 through 17. Romans chapter 2, verse 13 through 17. These people will post... These people. You mean people actually believe what the Bible says? ...list videos critiquing, critiquing Bible believers, and they're, and they're like saying, Oh, but I'm just a video ministry. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a church. Well, it doesn't change the fact you're still obsessed over a person. And I don't care if you're a video ministry, any ministry at all that's dedicated and obsessed with critiquing. You get the evil comes out of his face. He got caught. You want to have a little cult and don't get it critiqued. 
That's what these guys can't stand. If you had a legitimate, he puts the videos. I'm not critiquing your Bible classes. I don't know what goes on in your Bible classes. I'm critiquing your videos. Bible believers who believe in dispensationalism, the King James Bible is perfect, do soul winning and try to get people involved in church, you got a mental issue right there. Oh no, we're, we're exposing your lie. You're a fringe group. You're a cult. You're not part of dispensationalism. You're teaching a lie. You got a mental... You, you accuse us for having an arrogant, dark spirit? Yeah. What hypocrisy! You whited sepulchre, as Jesus called you at Matthew 23. And as a matter of fact, you actually look whited sepulchre, too. We know he's talking to now. <laughs> hey, hey, how about uh, First Timothy How about First Timothy 5, 1, buddy? Let's look at Romans. So I guess he's watching my videos. Chapter 2, verse 13. He doesn't want to be critiqued. A good teacher would not mind the criticism, people. A good teacher would welcome the criticism. He just sits there with a bunch of yes men in his class. No one asks him any questions. And he sits in there. And just like Breaker doesn't want comments. Just like uh, uh, Davis doesn't want comments. Just like Sluder doesn't want comments. They just sit there and ex ex uh, just put forth their filth and their lies and the deception. And then they get mad when somebody comes up and says, you're lying. <laughs> and they get exposed. No. I, uh, 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 Noah wasn't saved by believing in the flood. And that was what you were jumping up and down about. Like you were jumping up and down, running, running around in uh, Sluter's church, making a fool of yourself. 14. Now, again, watch my video, Why Satan Lied About Old Testament Salvation, because I'm not going to expound this. So Romans chapter 2. Now it's going to go back to Romans 2. What's Romans 2 with, any, with anything? Romans 2 is a hypothetical. That if you keep the law. He, Kim has admitted you can't keep the law. Verse 13 through 14, we use this as proof that if you were a Gentile in the Old Testament, see, you did not have the law, right? The Old Testament law. So how are you supposed to know the works? So if you were a Gentile that time, Romans chapter 2, verse 13 through 14 prove the law was in your conscience. That's the idea. Oh, uh, That's why we move uh, dispensations. Because that's one of the dispensation of conscience. Man can't live by his conscience. That's a failure. That's what the, that's what the dispensation of conscience proved. He can't live by his conscience. All have sinned to fall short of the glory of God. And notice in that passage, it proved right there your salvation. Kim, you're an idiot. Let me just say that before we move on. You're a little punk, too. Depended on how you followed the works in your conscience. So... Remember that this is not Christian salvation. We believe faith alone, not by work. Yeah, so what? You're preaching a false gospel in another dispensation. No one gets saved by their conscience. Gentile in the Old Testament, their salvation... Without faith, it's impossible to please him. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. A good conscience will only mean, basically, a person who have access, basically, God had not written them off. So... If he wants truth, he'll get more truth. But if if he stops with his conscience, he's not going anywhere. What the hell? Salvation was faith and works. Now, how the critics will like to argue against this is that oh, it's just the conscience is means the law is written in their heart. There are certain things like the uh, in Genesis twenty, knowing that adultery is a sin, an evil, and the Pharaoh knew that. So there's certain things people know. That's why cultures that exist. They don't have scriptures, still have laws against stealing and murder and adultery because the law is written in their heart. No, no culture can survive if you can just murder people and rob people and take their wives. So that's the law written in the heart as opposed to the written law, which made it very explicit. Pathetical. Wow, you notice this? I'm glad... You know, they think that by critiquing endless videos, that they're going to win a point. I'm going to show right there, they're going to be their own destruction more and more. Oh, I can't wait, Kim. I know so a guy so puffed up in his arrogance, with so less, so little ability and thinking ability, and yet he's so, they all got, all of them puffed up. You hear, you hear Robert Blake talk himself in the third person. They all talk about themselves in the third person. This is a guy who doesn't know anything about anything. 
and he's defending a flawed system, and he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna just, oh, he's going to show us. Yap all you want, because I'm going to prove to you more and more and more you're using Alexandrian interpretation rather than reading the verse as it says. Who would like to say the scripture verse that you're reading is hypothetical mm -hmm. rather than just reading it as it says? Well, because that's the context, because we read cha chapter 3. See, hypothetical, that's right. It has to be hypothetical. Because you can't say, get saved with the conscience. And you can't get saved with the law. How can you get saved? Because no one can keep the law. So it's a hypothetical. Because it's saying, yeah, if you can keep the law, you can get saved. Okay. Uh, 14, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these have not the law all law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile, excusing, accusing, or else excusing one another. You can see your conscience very easy. In the days when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, behold, thou art caught a Jew and rest us in the law, and make us thy boast of God, and know us his will, and approve us the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law, and are confident that thou uh, uh, thyself art a guide to, of the blind, a light to, of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth uh, in the law. And then he goes on talking about the Jew. That the Jew can't keep the law. So having the conscience of the law means nothing, except you get certain blessings as a nation, of Gentiles by not committing adultery, not committing murder, uh, not committing uh, theft. That's not going to save you. And no one can keep the law, so it's hypothetical. It's hypothetical the fact that you think you can uh, keep doing uh, keep doing the law and somehow be saved. What's the hypothetical part here? Let's see. It's not one person who's going to be saved from Acts chapter 2. Um... See. Verse 10, that's the one you go, But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there's no respect of persons with God. He's saying God, God will bless the Jew and the Gentile if they do good. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are, are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Which means... The Jew can't be justified by being doing or doing of the word, or doing of the law, because no one can keep the law. If you break one, James two ten, you've broken them all. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these have not the law or law unto themselves, which show the work of their law wit, uh, of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts and means while ex accusing or else excusing one another. Then you go to Genesis three uh, to Romans three fifteen, and you say, "All well, sin falls short of the glory of God." Oh, so this is hypothetical. It's hypothetical. Yeah, that's what that's what it is, because no one gets saved by their conscience, and no one can save by the law. Dangerous, and these people. Th no, dangerous. It's true. You can get you can't get saved in Romans two. You can't keep the law. He miss, he admitted that in the other video. No one can keep the law. So what makes you can keep you think you can keep the conscience is just a, as a way of uh, uh, having the law. Basic law to the average individual. Law accu accusing or excusing one another. You'd be surprised what your conscience will excuse you of. Just to believe the King James Bible as they read it, as they say? Oh, uh, yeah, we read it in context. We don't just stop at a chapter and then ignore the next chapter. There's a logical order in reading. Clearly, something this guy never f figured out. Troubling to you. Troubling. You just want to isolate verses. That's what cults do. That's what cults do. The fact of the matter is, no one gets saved in Romans 2. Now, Romans 2 puts you con under condemnation. The purpose of Romans 2 is to put everyone under condemnation. The first chapter was put the Gentiles under condemnation. The second chapter was put the Jew under condemnation and compare them to Gentiles. Because the Jew is standing up and saying, well, these guys don't have the law. And then God's saying, well, they have a law written in their heart. They have a conscience. And if they kept the conscience, they would have been Say, but they can't keep the conscience, and you have a written law, and you can't keep the written law. 
Their justification is this, Romans chapter 3. That's their justification. Well, yeah, that's their justification. See, he's learning. Let's look at Romans chapter 3 and then verses 9 through 20. Romans chapter 3, verses 9 through 20. So here's their law. This is best known as reading people. You don't stop at chapter 2 and say, see what it says. That's what cults do. We read right through chapters 1, 2, and 3. There's an order. And then by chapter 4, you talk about salvation. The good news shows up in chapter 4. So what's the what's first of chapter 3 here? Okay, here we go again. Here we go again. They're going to explain. They always, they just refuse to read as it says. They have to uh, read as it says? You're supposed to read in context. This man is a liar, a liar and a foul-mouthed liar. No one gets saved in Romans 2. There's no salvation in Romans 2 because you can't keep the conscience, you can't keep the law. Do wordplay and find all these kind of deductions to add together. And oh, you mean reading? A logical order. You don't start with chapter 2 in Romans. You start from chapter 1 and read through use some kind of interpretation. Why so much work and so much effort? Why not just leave it as it says, huh? As it says, how about reading? Just read as it says. And then you just divide it to the time period. Simple. Oh, simple. But, yeah, we want to believe a lie. That's what cults do. Want to believe a lie? Just ignore context. Okay, this is how they deduce their deductions together and come up oh, with Oh, it's so complicated. That's, that's what people are reading for, for, for centuries. No one's been saved in Romans 2. And you know, you know what Romans 2 is for? Well, Catholics. Roman Catholics. They go to Romans 2. Thinking you get saved by works. This is hypothetical. Why? Because Paul was just simply saying, if you kept all the law, then you are saved. But in Romans chapter 3, verse 9 through 20, Paul proved no one could keep the law. Yeah, there you go. That's exactly right. That's why Romans 2 was hypothetical. It was just simply pointing the fact that, yeah, if you kept the law, then you're saved. But in Romans chapter 3, realistically, you can't keep all the law. That's how they get around it. Get around it. That's a fact. <laughs> get around it by teaching a fact. Now, the problem is this, okay? What's the problem? Here? Verse 9 through 20, you can read all of that all you want. And it is true. No one can keep the law. No one was justified by the law. That's right. So it's true. Which means Romans 2 can't be saying you can get saved by the law, Kim. True. But, 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 but read verse 21. Oh, let's read verse 21. That's going to show us something. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So what does that have to do with another kind of salvation? 9 through 20. No one can keep the law. Got it. 21. Yeah. But what? Now, see, the Christian day and age day. Now, the righteousness of God with what? Without the law is manifest. There's another guy I can't read. The but now is not time, people. The but now is a summation of an argument. Here's another nitwit like Robert Blake who can't read English. He's not saying but now in this dispensation. He's summing up an argument. Verse 19, now we know, now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that everyone's mouth shall be, may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be, just, uh, flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, he's just saying, he's not saying, he's saying, but now in this dispensation, he's saying, but now, he's, and he's, he's come to a conclusion. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned to come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So the point is, he's coming to an, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, a, a logical conclusion. Not saying this dispensation... In fact, another dispensation you could save with the law. He points out that the law 
For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Paul points the same thing out in Galatians. The law was never meant to save anybody, and it couldn't save anybody. And so they're going to take this but now, and try to, try to make it a time element, when he's saying, now Jesus Christ, but now he is the conclusion to this, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he's the, he's the, law, he's, he's the fulfillment of the law in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but now, that's a logical argument he's making there. Ah, so today in the Christian church age, now we have the righteousness of Jesus, Jesus without the law. See that? You couldn't get saved with the law. He had, what was he talking about? No one gets saved by the law. He said that. Look, we, look at what you're trying to look, try to read this. You couldn't get by, saved by the law. The law was to point you to your need for the Savior. And now it's saying that Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law. So now we can just put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that the law was pointing to. Being witnessed by the what? Law and the prophet. Wait a minute. So there was a law before then. Yeah, there was a law before that. So what is it? Faith and works. See, there was a law. It doesn't say anything about faith and works. It doesn't say anything. It says the law. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. We're under the law. The law was to point you to your need for your Savior. Well, before, but now, Paul said, is what? Not the law. Now. Verse 19. Now we know that what things whoever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. So what he's saying is that the Gentiles, what God is saying, he's saying the Gentiles had a, had a law in their hearts and the Jew had a written law. And they're all guilty. See that? See these guys, they can't read. They cannot read English. You know what this proves? There's a change right here. There's a dis uh, It's the fact that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. That's what it's showing. Paul is showing that Jesus Christ is the one who completes the law, and you couldn't you couldn't get saved by the law. The Gentile couldn't get saved by his conscience, but he gets saved by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Sensation. Let's keep reading right here. Verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. That's why verse 23 says no one is clean enough to go to heaven. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 24, you're justified freely. 25, 26, 27. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go back, buddy. Verse 19. All the world might become guilty before God. Joe and Gentile are guilty before God. That's what the first, first two chapters are pointing out. first chapter points that Gentiles are guilty. The second chapter shows that Jews are guilty of hypocrisy. Because they're looking down the Gentiles saying they're not saved. And God is saying, well, they could have been saved if they, had the, if they completed the conscience. But their problem was they, they see their conscience. Your problem is with the Jew is that you couldn't keep the law. So now all are guilty before God. All the way down. You notice right here, that's why no one is saved by the law. No one ever could be saved by the law. You admitted no one could keep the law. Paul says that in Galatians. The law was never meant to save anybody. He's trying to make it no one gets saved by the law now. Why? Because Jesus Christ sacrificed now. See that? You see that, people? He's trying to imply you can get saved by the law before Christ. Look at Romans 2 again. Now the righteousness of God. Based on what? Now the righteousness of God. See that? He's trying to make a time element. Paul's making a logical argument. Christ payment on the cross. Based on this, that's why you don't go by... That's why. No. ...the law for your salvation. Uh, no one gets saved by the law. He said you could, no one could keep the law. See the contradiction? No one could have kept the law. That's why Romans 2 is hypothetical. Because no one could keep the law. That's like the rich young ruler come to Christ and say, what well, I have to do, do to get eternal life? 
And he says, well, keep the law. And the guy goes through all that. And then the Lord says, well, okay, fine. Sell your goods and come with me. He says, well, I can't, you know, he, he had too many goods. And he said, I'm not doing it. Showed he was covetous. So now he's trying to put it back here, just like the idiot Robert Blake, who tries to bring now into a, dis, a, a, a time element when now is a logical argument. The law could not save. The conscience could not save. But now Jesus Christ is here. The logical argument, he will save. But the law never could save. The only thing he saved was the faith in the gospel that was being preached then. See, works never save you. That's why you go by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But before this time period now, without the law, right? Someone get saved? Were they in the law? Weren't they under the law? Yes. Yes, but they couldn't be saved by the law because no one could keep the law. Not only that, Jesus did not die yet. You can't get this righteousness without the law until you get this payment first. Jesus dying on the cross first. You can't get that righteousness without, without Jesus Christ dying on the cross. And what did Abraham have? Imputed righteousness. What did Noah have? Imputed righteousness. What did David have? Imputed righteousness. That's why you don't keep the law for your salvation. It was based on... And they didn't keep the law for their salvation either. Because no one could keep the law. No one keep the law. That means no one could have been saved. <laughs> See it? These guys, how warped their thinking is? This time period, this work of Jesus Christ, to say it outside of the work of Jesus Christ is attacking his attributes. Now, see, you're trying to reverse that? They're attacking the attributes of God by saying someone gets saved by, uh, by works. When no one could get saved by works, and he admits no one can keep the law. Now he's saying imputed righteousness couldn't happen before the cross, when clearly Abraham did receive imputed righteousness, David did receive imputed righteousness, Noah walked with God, Enoch walked with God, Ruckman uh, 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 says Adam uh, and uh, Noah and uh, Abraham were saved through grace. So what is he talking about? You can never get to heaven except what? When Jesus died for you. That's how you get to heaven by God. And that's what God foresaw. That's what he applied to them. Well, his logical argument would say that no one's ever saved in the Old Testament people. God's grace. Unless you want to say that God lets, gives his grace without the payment and death of Jesus Christ, then his grace is contaminated. Because What's grace he talking about? Now he's talking both sides of his mouth. We're the ones saying you had to believe in the coming, whatever, whatever gospel he was told to believe in. And the works have nothing to do with your salvation. He's the one putting works in salvation. Which can't have anything to do with salvation. Because all, it's all based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. God looked forward to the cross. And he applied that to the people in the Old Testament. But now, their works showed that faith. Had nothing to do with their salvation. Faith must reconcile with holiness. Holiness must judge sin no matter what. Yeah, we know that. See, now he's, now he's putting up a straw man. Now he's putting up a smoke. Uh, trying to pretend that we argue with that. This is these are liars, rotten, no good liars. We understand exactly the basis of everyone's Old Testament salvation was the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. But they were saved. How were the uh, the original apostles saved? Kingdom gospel. Had Christ died yet? Go to act, go to John thirteen. They were all clean except one. The only way you can reconcile grace and holiness is his cross. Yeah, we know that. Now, see, this is this is the lie. Now he's switching off from the, uh, the problem. We say Romans 2 is hypothetical because no one can get saved by the law. He admits no one can get saved by the law. Now he's jumping into the, the issue of grace and the cross and trying to say we are arguing against that. Don't give some kind of wrong type of grace right there. You cannot do You liar. That. You foul mouth liar. you got to prove that Romans 2 isn't hypothetical. That someone can get saved with a good conscience or under the law. By doing works of the law. The fact of the matter is people were saved by Old Testament salvation. Believe what God told them to believe. And God applying the cross to them. And the cross, that's why they went to Abraham's bosom. Waiting for the historical cross to happen. And Jesus Christ came and took them captivity captive. Because look at Romans 2. Romans 2, we read that, right? Romans 2. Yeah, yeah. So tell us why it's not hypothetical. 
You can't. The fact is, no one can get saved by doing the law or their conscience. They had to believe. The issue was what they believed in. Trusting what God told them to trust in, and then God could apply the cross before the cross to them. Verse, uh, the same passage 13 and 14, were they without the law, or were, are they under the law? The law of conscience, right? Yeah, Isn't that what the verse yeah. and no one can keep it. In Romans chapter 2. So that means they were sinners. <laughs> so their works couldn't save them, right? So this is under the law. Romans 3, based when Jesus Christ died, when is that? Without the law. Now, look at Galatians. No, Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. That's what Romans 3 is talking about. Romans 3 isn't saying they're not under the law. Romans 3 is saying it, Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. And therefore, no one could get saved by keeping the law. That was Paul's mistake. He was trying to keep the law. That's why Romans 2 is hypothetical. Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 verse 21. These people, they don't look at the different time periods. See that? Dispensational. No, we know how to read English. Unlike you, it says now and think that's a dispensational change. But now. That's a logical argument. Where Paul has made the point that no one can get saved in Romans 2. He makes a hypothetical argument. Oh yeah, if you can keep doing this, then yeah, God would uh, 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 save you. But you can't. Kim admits that. So what are they saved with? They were saved with believing what God told them to believe in. Just like the, uh, the uh, kingdom gospel. And the apostles, the 11 apostles who were saved were all clean. The cross hadn't happened yet. Let's look at the different time periods. We rightly divide it. These people like to just assimilate everything together, mashed potato. Oh no, it's reading. It's called reading. Rightly dividing. What you mean is what you want is isolate. This is fragmented thinking. What Kim is talking about and what Robert Baker does is fragmented thinking. The scriptures have to be harmonized, not fragmented. That's what cults do. That's what Brian Dengler does. He fragments the, uh, the uh, verses. That's very troubling. They, they don't rightly divide this. Oh, we rightly divide it. Has he proven that Acts 2 is not, uh, Romans 2 isn't hypothetical? No. Because no one gets saved with their conscience or the law. Now look at Galatians chapter 3. Which, which gives the impression of Romans 2. Romans 2 is like say, saying that. Well, yeah. It looks like someone gets saved there. No. Because you'd have to be perfect then. You'd have to have a perfect conscience and, or, uh, or keep complete or, uh, or keep all the law. They and, and then he goes to Romans 3 and says, no, you can't. This, then let me explain this way, okay? Look at verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law which, uh, if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Which means it isn't. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. See, Galatians is repeating Romans 3, you know? Yeah! That? And saying no one gets saved by their conscience or the law. Is that? So, Romans 3, Galatians 3, similar chapter, no surprise right there, is giving the same idea. No one can keep the law for salvation. We admit that. Oh, yeah, thank you! Because the scriptures teach it. Admit that no one is perfect enough to keep the law. So their works can save them. The works have nothing to do with the salvation. For salvation. That's why they were not perfect enough to go to heaven. You know where they Oh no, it's not, that's not the issue why they want, uh, couldn't go to heaven. It's the blood hadn't been shed yet. See, you didn't even figure that out. The blood hadn't been shed yet. That's why they couldn't go to heaven. They went, they had to go down to Abraham's bosom. And I'm going to, re uh, it's like, no matter how many times I repeat, they're not going to get this. You know, I get it because you're not teaching it right. They went to him in his bosom because the blood hadn't been shed yet. It was on credit. They were saved on credit. But it had a historical act to do it. So, that's the reason why we admit it. Yes, no one can keep the law for salvation. That's why they had to go to Abraham's bosom. And wait for Jesus Christ to pay. That means Romans 2 is hypothetical. How <laughs> we jump and obey him in the bosom. This guy is all over the place. 
just like Walkman, uh, just like Walkman, just like Breaker and Sluder and Davis and Denlinger. So I want to name all. His, I want to name all his buddies, all his Bible believing buddies. I want to name them all to get him triggered again. So I hope I haven't left any of them out. It. See, Jesus Christ didn't pay it yet. So because he didn't pay it. Yeah, there we go. I didn't know they're not being perfect. It had to deal with them not having the, the, the thing hadn't been paid yet. The blood hadn't been shed yet. The blood had to be shed. The payment had to be made. So they were saved not by works, but by faith in what they were told to believe in. And that was applied to them. David says their sins were covered, not, not taken away. They were forgiven, but they were covered. Our sins are taken away. They cannot get saved by grace alone. You sure could. They couldn't be saved by works. You just said no one keep the law. They couldn't be saved by grace alone. <laughs> Voice. They had to go. They had no choice. See that? There was no salvation through Jesus Christ's death available that time. They had no choice. They had a gospel to believe in. A promise. Abel. This guy's never read the Bible. <laughs> he just read Abel. Abel gave witness to his sacrifice. And that sacrifice was a type, a type of the shedding of blood of Jesus Christ. They didn't understand the type. They didn't understand many things they did. But they understood that it was a promise of Messiah coming. The, right. seed, so they the coming to, seed. They had to do law that time. They had to do law. No, the law was to bless them. The conscience blesses you if you follow the conscience correctly. The law will bless you if you follow the law. It will bless you. Even as an unbeliever, if you follow the conscience, there's blessing in time for that. If you follow the law in time, there's blessing for you. It won't help you eternal, but there's blessing in time because God's laws were set up to bless man in his, in his, in his regular life. And then because they had no choice but to go by the law, but they're not perfect enough to go to heaven, they had to go to Abraham's bosom. Now, oh, this is limbo, limbo. No, that's not limbo. That's no, no, I'm saying you guys made it like limbo. If no one's saved in there, he can't understand the arguments. I didn't say it was limbo. Kim, I didn't say it was limbo. I said you guys are making it like limbo by saying these people in Abraham's bosom weren't saved. They were saved people. That means they had to be regenerated. That means they had an imputation of righteousness. That means they were justified to be in Abraham's bosom. Including Lot. Just Lot. Scripture. That's scripture. Read Luke 16. Abraham's bosom. They're down there. What did Abraham say? They had Moses and the law and the prophets. And they were down there in Abraham's bosom. Limbo? No, this is scripture. No, we're not, dying. We're not saying it's limbo. We said, if you think, if you say no one's saved back there, it would be limbo. It's not limbo. We know it's not limbo. It's a legitimate place that's empty now, where saved people went. Saved on credit, based on the foreseen course. That's where they were waiting until the actual blood was shed. But they were saved. That's why they went there. Who made that up? I wonder who taught you that. Did you make it up? Then you must be someone that's creating your own doctrine. Something See this? See how they twist things? They misstate what what's, was said about limbo. I say that if, if 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 these people weren't saved in Abraham's bosom, like Robert Breaker teaches, then you have a form of limbo. They're basically they're unsaved. They're just sitting there, not lost, but not saved. But if they're saved, which they are, that means they had to be regenerated. They had to receive the imputation of God's righteousness, and they had to be justified right here. So anyways, the thing Stop lying, Kim. is right here is that you Is moments too hypothetical or not? No man can keep the conscience, no man can keep the law. So it must be hypothetical. You can't get to heaven with the law or your conscience. Yes, no one can keep the law. That's why they have to go down there. But no one keep the law. So moments too is hypothetical. They had no choice but to still but to still go by the law because there was nothing. Uh, there was nothing. There was nothing. The law was for blessing or cursing, not for salvation. As Paul said, the law was couldn't give life. There was nothing else to do. No one could be saved by the law. The law was never meant to save anybody. It was to point out your own sins because you couldn't keep it. 
And then also, if you could keep it, keep it as much as you could, you get blessed by it. Just like you get blessed in this country by keeping its laws. You want to get punished? Break the laws. Oh, I don't oh, amen. I have people saying amen. I don't believe in that. You're making it up. No, keep reading. Verse 21, 22, admitted the law could not save. That's yeah. So he's got you people, he's got people under the law doing something they can't get saved by. Well, that's what Romans 2 is talking about. They can't get saved. He get, these guys believe the rich young ruler going to Jesus Christ, and when Jesus Christ said, we'll keep the commandments, that Jesus Christ meant that. When he just said, no, we can keep the law, that means Jesus Christ would have been lying to the guy. Do you understand that? Do you understand? The guy said, I kept the law. Oh, good. Oh, Jesus Christ, okay, then you'll just say, <laughs> he said, no, one more thing. These guys actually believe that that's a proof text to show a faith world system that a guy can keep the law. When Paul is saying, oh, no, no one keep the law. He admits you can't keep the law. So, so they got to do something. What they got to do is believe. That's what Romans 11 is talking about. Well, it was a temporary basis. But, verse 23, but before faith came, we were what? Kept under the law. Look at this. This is Ro Romans 2. Yeah. Romans 3. Galatians 3. You're not reading. Oh, we're reading very clearly. And uh, the problem is, uh, you, you know, Galatians 3, 21. Uh, 22. But, but the scripture hath concluded all the sin, the promise of by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, who's Paul talking about, the Jew, Shut up unto the faith that afterwards be revealed. Who, what's he talking about? Jesus Christ. That's what John 1.17 is talking about. Jesus Christ coming. Moses was pointing to Jesus Christ. The Jews were depending on the law. That's what what man wants you to believe. That's what this guy wants you to believe. That the law would save him. And the point was, apostles, well, he kept the law and he couldn't get saved by it. Why? Uh... Shut up until the faith that should be revealed, uh, 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 after it should be revealed. Jesus Christ coming. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. The law was meant to bring you to faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer on the schoolmaster, but ye are all the children of God by faith in, in Christ Jesus. Now remember, he's talking about the Galatians here who want to go back to the law. Keep that in context. Understand what's going on there. Before faith came. See, they didn't have this salvation by faith in Jesus Christ. That's it was pointing to Jesus Christ. It was pointing to faith. The problem with the Jew, in Romans, talks about in Romans, uh, Romans 9, 10, 11, they had a problem with faith. And the issue was that the law was to point you to faith, not to, be kept, not to keep the law. The law was to point, the point that you couldn't keep the law. Instead, the Jew got entangled in the law and says, oh, look at how great we're keeping the law. It was to point you to faith. The faith of Abraham. I have no choice but to be kept under the law. Oh no, they, they received this somehow. No, shut up. Read that verse. It says, shut up unto the faith. We should act. Shut up unto, unto the faith to lead, you, to lead you to Christ. They were under the law, not as a way to get saved, but under the law to lead you to Christ. After be, words be revealed. I did not mean to say shut up to you. I just, the scripture told you to shut up. That's what it said. Yeah, he's telling you. That's exactly right. Shut up, Kim. Because you don't know what you're talking about. If they say that, oh no, no. They somehow had access to this. The scripture tells you. Access, oh, no one got saved before uh, before cross? The law was to shut up people in the Old Testament and the Jews to lead them to faith. The eleven apostles got saved by believing in the kingdom gospel. The law led them to that. The law would told them that a Messiah was coming. That led them to faith. And by that faith, they believed in 11, the, uh, the, uh, the, that Jesus Christ was the Messiah when he came. When he showed up, yeah, he's the one. They were saved men before that. They weren't lost, they were saved. And they were clean. John 13. Except, you know, except for Judas, who wasn't a believer. Shut up. Uh, you know why? You make endless videos. So no one's watching you anymore. Except your own little girl. You, you are. 
You had to answer it, didn't you, Kim? Make endless videos. You had to answer it, didn't Kim? You got caught. Your students couldn't figure out what you were talking about. They couldn't, they couldn't nail you down. But you had to make a 20 minute, 3 minute video, 23 minute video in order to explain. And he still hasn't gone back and said why Romans 2 isn't hypothetical. But we got people watching us online that have been so grateful for teaching dispensational salvation because that has rescued them from a lot of wrong doctrines out there. Oh, so you place one wrong doctrine, another wrong doctrine. That's their logic. So that's the idea right here. I'm What's the idea? How do you, why, is, why is Romans 2 not hypothetical? My goodness. The last argument that they like to use is Ezekiel chapter 18. So oh, the last argument we use is Lot. How's Lot saved? They won't talk about Lot. Oh, I'm just going to make this very quick and easy right here. Ezekiel 18, the passage said that if a soul committed wickedness and he drew and he quit his righteousness, you know what the Bible says? He's going to die in his sins. Now that's going back to John. See, that's the verse that was used, die in the sins. And they did die in the sins. What happened? The Romans came and destroyed them. It's still a physical death. Proves that you better, that's faith and works in the Old Testament. No, it doesn't prove anything. That's how they try to use it. They go one verse in John 8, when the Lord told them, he says, if you don't believe in me as your Messiah, you're going to die in your sins. What was he talking about? The Romans coming and killing him, which is what happened. That's what happened in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 14. It says, if Daniel, Noah, and Job were alive, they could only save their own souls. Is it talking about giving salvation to other people? No, it's talking about physical salvation. If there were ten righteous men found in Sod Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities would have been spared. That's blessing by association. Physical. That wouldn't have been those people were saved eternally. They would still have been damned to go to hell. But they wouldn't have been destroyed physically. None of these idiots can think outside their little box. But, but oh, Kim, he doesn't can't he can't stand now, it. How they would like to argue is no, that's just physical death. That has that's just physical death because this go go, go to Ezekiel fourteen with Noah, Daniel, and Job. Thing to do with spiritual salvation. No, it doesn't. Because you can't pass on. He just said no one can keep the law for eternal salvation. People now he's telling you, you can. Get that? Now he's telling you, no one keep the law for salvation. Eternal salvation. Now it's telling you, oh, if you stop your wickedness and you're righteous, you're what? You go to heaven? No. <laughs> God would spare you physically. Uh, one, it said soul right here. Yeah, because their souls were attached to their body, and souls often used interchangeably with the physical body in the Old Testament. They would say, my soul, my soul thirsts or hungers. But then they're going to say, but notice it says right here that they're going to be killed. That they're going to be taken away, etc., etc. So you're going to see physical death in there. My simple answer to that is this. My simple answer. Mean simplistic answer. To that is these people who attack. These people. Ezekiel chapter 18. You can't get saved by works. Any dispensation, and they're going to tell you in Ezekiel 18, somebody's going to be made righteous, and God's going to uh, save them eternally. No. They admit this. They admit that. There's a doctrine called spiritual circumcision. What is yeah, we believe that. Spiritual circumcision. In the Old Testament, your soul was your soul was stuck to your body. Yeah. That's spiritual circumcision. If you don't understand that doctrine, I'll put the video underneath this video. All right? I'll put the video link below this video. Watch that one. I'm not going to So, the soul will often be used in terms of the physical body. Physical life. Here, but the soul was stuck. We don't say our, our soul thirsts, our, our, our soul is hungry. We have two natures, they had one nature, it was soul, the soul was attached to their body, so they will use the soul interchangeably with physical life to the body in the Old Testament. When Jesus died on the cross, what happened was then the soul was separated from the body, so the soul is in the body, but it's no longer stuck to the body because you have an inner man. Why? Because the Holy Spirit divided your spiritual nature from... Like he's telling something new. This, this is told by Schofield people. This isn't new. This is some breakthrough a Ruckman taught. Schofield taught the two natures. Fleshy nature. That's the reason why. So it became like this. 
So these people so who attacked these people Ezekiel 18, they go to Ezekiel 14 and say, see Noah, Daniel, and Job can only save their own souls. Is he talking about their spiritual life? Spiritual eternal eternal life? No, they say it was saved men. I had to talk between about their physical life. They couldn't save their own sons and daughters in that wicked generation. They're blessed by association. Abraham was able to could have saved that city, the so cities, if there were ten righteous men in it. Leave this doctrine. The soul was stuck to the body. Okay, if you agree that whatever sin he committed in his body, he would die in them, what's also contaminated too? Your soul. Whoa. 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 What? That mean you have to be sinless perfect to get to heaven? Abraham's bosom? You don't think you don't think these guys died had sins on them when they died? He just can't, he just made a big damn no one keep the law. The fact of the matter is, when the Lord Jesus Christ looked at uh, talked about the when I mean, he washed the feet of the disciples, he said all clean, but you still have to wash your hands and your feet. That's why in, in the temple or the tabernacle they had a basin of water you'd go to and clean clean your hands and your feet. And the high priest had to clean their hands and feet. That's your walk. That's what the sins looked at, your walk. And so when the Lord washed the feet of the disciples, he was, and, and Peter said, you know, don't wash my feet. He says, well, you have no part of me if I don't wash your feet. And he said, wash my whole body. And he says, the Lord says, I don't have to. You, you're clean. What are you going to do with that? That's what am I going to do with it? Very easy. Just because you see soul doesn't mean you're talking about eternal life. You're talking about physical life. And no one can get saved by just doing being righteous. It's easy debunking to that one. That's why I don't. Oh, know. it's easy debunking. So there's King Kim in all his glory and stupidity, and uh, he got caught. He got caught. I'll go through the rest of the nonsense of Ezekiel 18. I said one of the proof texts. Did you notice he didn't do anything with Lot, people? They can't deal with Lot. So what about the soul? The soul attached to the body. Disciples, when the Lord was cleaning him, cleaning his feet, washing their feet, he didn't say, well, you have some sins on your body. He said, your feet, hands and your feet. So the God would look at their walk. No one went to heaven. No one dies perfect. <laughs> in perfection. Unless somehow you confess your sins right before you die. So. But the fact of the matter is, is that this is one lie after another lie after another lie. And in order they, this is what Ruckman's logic was. There appear to be faith works, faith works, and you know I can't handle eternal security in the Book of Hebrews. I can't deal with James, so what I'm going to do. Presto! I'm just going to put him in another dispensation. Did he show Romans two wasn't hypothetical? He showed anything. All of a sudden, he jumped off the Galatians, kept them the law, put in the law. That's right. The law was to point people to salvation. It was to point people to the coming Messiah. It was to point people to the fact that you're sinning. You can't keep the law. You need a Messiah. You need a you need a Savior. The law was to point that to you, not the fact that you can just say, "Yeah, I can keep the law." And I said they use one of those, that proof text with uh, the guy, the uh, which young ruler comes to the Lord and says, uh, uh, "You know, what must I do? To, uh, what commandments I have to keep to keep eternal life?" And the Lord points out some commandments. So I've kept them all. And the Lord said, "You're going to heaven." <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> no, he said, "Oh, one more." Sell all he thinks and follow me. And the guy said, I, he walked away sad. He had to do any good. He's covetous. Covetous is what? By, by breaking the, the first commandment. I don't worship. So this is uh, uh, Kim. And Kim, I'm not stopping making videos against you. No one sits in your class asking you anything because they're just a bunch of uh, bumps on the log. They don't have the guts to ask you. It's so easy. Cause it's, so, it's so easy. It's so easy. <laughs> do it a lot. Uh, 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 Kim, tell us how Lot was saved by his works. He had to do something. Uh, he had to do law. The law was to lead them to a Messiah. The law was to show they need a Messiah. The conscience could be seared. So you, you wouldn't think. But the law was like, okay, you can't, you, you're showing you're breaking the law all the time. But the, so, because the law was actually in, internal, and then God gave him an external law. The law was good, but the law couldn't save. The law was not spiritual. The problem with the Jew is that he felt they could keep the law. If we keep these laws, we'll get saved. Abraham's bosom was where saved people went, waiting for 
the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. But they were saved. The apostles were saved on the, the kingdom gospel, waiting for a coming Messiah. That was the Christ, the Son of God. That, that was what the, uh, the, their, their, their uh, gospel was based on. Ours, but ours is now with we, that, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And yet Peter was a saved man. Clean. In Peter righteousness. Justified. He wasn't keeping the law, any salvation. He was keeping the law to show his salvation. He was a righteous man in the sense of ordinances. But that's not what Satan. What Satan was believing that kingdom gospel. So I'll stop with this up. And the old Kim, old Breaker, Davis, Sluder, Denglinger. Who else is out there teaching this nonsense? These lies. Ezekiel 18. Oh, Ezekiel 18, the righteous. God's going to take you to heaven because you're righteous. Obviously, it's physical death because he's going to spare the righteous and kill the, and kill the guilty. The wicked, the wicked. It can't be because you're righteous now you're going to heaven. It can't be. Oh, these people are going to These people are just listening to the scriptures. <laughs> did, you see, did you show how Romans do was hypothetical? Uh, uh, wasn't hypothetical? Oh, this argument is so simple. Let me just break this down. Let me show you this. They don't read what's there, you know. Paul's making a logical argument, but now Jesus Christ has come. He's the fulfillment of the law. He's the one that the law was pointing to. It isn't saying now this dispensation. He's saying, but now, Paul is pointing out, that's who Paul was pointing to. Because when we go to John, the problem with the Jews, the Jews was what? They kept the thing Moses could save them. Moses was never meant to save them. Moses was to point them to the one that was, that's why, you know, Deuteronomy 18.18. 18, the, the, the prophet would come after me. And that was the, the, the prophet they were supposed to look for for salvation. The one who would bring salvation to them. So Stom put this up. And again, lie after lie after lie. Watch this guy teach. Oh, no one's listening to the video. No one's watching this guy. Point is, I'm putting him out. Obviously, he's watching him. Because he got to answer him. He got to answer him. And his uh, it with, it with uh, students there, they don't know what's going on. Because they're not reading the scriptures. All you gotta do is read uh, Ezekiel 14. Oh, he had the soul, so it means the sins were in the soul. No, the sins were in your hands and your feet, and you walk. That's why you wash your hands and your feet. Not your whole body. God didn't consider your whole body for sin. He considered you clean. But you had to walk. Your feet. Just like us. Internally. God looks at us, he sees our unrighteousness in us, he doesn't look at us as uh, unclean, but he sees our hands and our feet. And you're out of fellowship. That's why you have First John one nine. You got to get your hands feet, your hands clean, and feet your feet clean again, because you walk. Uh, so stop here and put this up. Amen. Thank you.